there is still so much we don't know about coronavirus, but one question that has scientists scratching their heads about is why some people with COVID-19 are asymptomatic while others get very sick. Well, now some immunology research has emerged that may help explain the phenomenon. So let's talk about it with our nine health expert, Dr. Paul Coley on a Friday afternoon. And Paul, what are the scientific factors that we have seen that might be giving us some insight into exactly how sick some people get? So, Tom, this is a new virus, so we're still learning, but there are two factors that seem to have emerged as the most important ones. The first is a concept called viral load, and that's essentially the number of copies of a virus that you have. And we know with other viruses, like influenza, HIV, and even other coronaviruses like SARS and MERS, how many copies you have of the virus directly influences how sick you get. With this particular coronavirus, there's mixed data out there, but there are more and more studies emerging that are saying that maybe more viruses equals getting sicker. And then the second is the host response. So that's how many soldiers the body is sending to fight the infection. And in, in the case of this virus, the body often overreacts and causes collateral damage. Yeah, we know the recipient, we're all different. We're all built differently and have different immune systems. But you and I talked about this a long time ago about those first responders, those people on the front lines, and you mentioned viral load. Those people may see many different copies of that, uh, of that viral load over the course of a shift even. Yeah, and so that concept that you're talking about is something called viral dose. So that's basically, think about that as the embers that light the fire. And then the viral load is the actual size of the fire once it's already been lit. That's how many copies of the virus are inside of you and how they're replicating. But you're absolutely right that the frontline workers could potentially also be doing worse because they're getting a higher viral dose. The embers are bigger, which is leading to a bigger fire, a higher viral load. So let's talk about the two factors you were just discussing and what these immunology studies are teaching us, or at least are starting to show us anyway. So, you know, very interesting data is emerging, Tom. And actually what we're learning is that this virus doesn't seem to trigger the immune response as efficiently as other viruses like the influenza virus. So I know you're a sports fan, so I'm going to use a sports analogy here. So it's basically like having your best players sitting on the bench while you're having the backup players going in to fight the infection. So that doesn't seem to be a very good idea. So that's the immune response. And with respect to the viral load, what we're seeing is that the viral load actually correlates with age. So the older you are, the more copies of the virus you tend to have inside of you. And that could be one explanation for why older people do worse, whereas children don't seem to do as badly. Does this hopefully start to point towards therapies as different ways that we can manage the, these situations? Yeah, and just earlier today, we saw that remdesivir got emergency use authorization by the FDA, and that, re that targets the viral replication. So that's, you know, addressing the replication of the virus. But you can imagine that down the line, we could have a cocktail of medications, one that looks at the viral replication, and the other that's an anti-inflammatory that targets that immune system's overreaction to try to treat this virus. I want to ask you about the news of the day. We switch to May and we start going to different uh, reopenings of different states, including here in Colorado. And, and while nobody says it is like flipping a light switch, it is going to happen to some extent slowly. When will we start to know or see the effect of that theoretically from a medical standpoint as far as maybe more cases or, or maybe a wider spread of, of these cases? Uh, yeah, it's really important to keep keep that in mind because we're not going to see the effects of what we're doing today for another two to three weeks. And that's assuming that the testing really ramps up the way that the governor has expected that it would in the next couple of weeks. So, so just because we open up today and nothing happens next week and the week after, it's just definitely not a time to become complacent and think that nothing's happening because those cases are really going to start showing up in two to three weeks. And it's getting warmer. People are getting outside, but hopefully the masks, the social distancing yeah. and all the other uh, things designed to keep us safe will continue to do so. Paul, I hope you have a great weekend. I always enjoy talking with you. Thanks.